Hi, this is Jim Siegel at the Columbus Dispatch, here to talk today about the State Controlling Board and the Ohio Lottery Commission. I know, once again, I'm here with all the exciting topics. Now, the Controlling Board is, this, uh, is a little-known state panel. It does a lot of spending oversight. Sometimes it can get kind of interesting. Uh, uh, earlier today, they uh, had a whole bunch of uh, unbid contracts up on the agenda. Uh, that they approved. Uh, they, when it say unbid, that means a bunch of agencies came in and, and wanted permission to basically hire people and, and, uh, and submit contracts without having to go through the bidding process. Well, once a couple they did not hear were from the Ohio Lottery Commission. Uh, the commission had originally had four items up, including one that would have given a $71 million two-year contract to Interlot, which is a, a Greek company that runs are uh, lottery terminals and uh, video slot machines, and they've done so for a number of years now. Well, it was pulled after uh, the dispatch reported earlier uh, last week that uh, one of the consultants that is actually hired by the Lottery Commission uh, said that, uh, recommended that they not do this, said that they, you know, this does not ensure that the lottery is getting the uh, best value it could. Uh, out of this contract by doing another no-bid contract with the same company that's been doing this for so many years. So, so basically, uh, when, after this story ran, and then I think some of the senators and lawmakers on the panel looked at it and said, you know, maybe we ought to take a closer look at this. And so the lottery pulled it off the agenda. Um, some of the senators I talked to today basically were like, you know, we, we, we don't, they don't really have a problem with what Interlot's been doing, but they're, they're like, you know, it's been a decade since we've actually had a bid contract on this, and it's a big contract. Uh, maybe we should start thinking about actually bidding this out again, start seeing what maybe some of Interlot's competitors might have to offer and might have to bring to the table. So we'll see. This is going to come back up again. Uh, I'm sure the Lottery Commission will put it back in front of the controlling board sometime in the next couple weeks, and then we'll see what happens with it there. Again, I don't think it'll ultimately be rejected, but I do think that uh, there's some more questions and uh, there's definitely some folks who want to see this bid out uh, in the next few years uh, or at least give a, a chance to see what else is out there in, in terms of options so we know we're getting the best deal for taxpayers. Uh, once that was all done, they, uh, they, they did approve a uh, Ohio Department of Health contract with the Cleveland Browns to do immunizations. So uh, I'll just leave that hanging there. You can make all the, uh, the Cleveland Browns immunizations jokes that you'd like uh, if, you, if you want. But uh, basically it's a new thing where they're trying to do advertising and other things in Brown Stadium and maybe work with some of the Browns players to try to increase the number of uh, immunizations that are uh, occurring in Ohio. Um, Indiana's doing something similar with the Colts. Uh, and they're hoping to kind of mimic that. So, and but just so you know, it's not the only reason it's the Browns and nobody else is because the Browns are the only ones that apparently submitted a proposal that the state actually thought it could afford or that it actually wanted to pay. Uh, the Blue Jackets, the Buckeyes, the Bengals um, also either ignored the state or submitted proposals that were too expensive. So, the Browns are the only ones that get it. So they get to you'll get to see uh, ads up in Brown Stadium about getting immunized for, against uh, all kinds of wonderful things. So, so that'll do it for me today. Uh, keep tuning in to Dispatch.com for all your news and information. Thanks.